Adrian Van Voorhees, and am I the only one who needs a glick fix? No, we do. Damn straight. Ladies and gentlemen, Jiminy Glick. Got it. Oh my goodness, one of these days. Pow, zoom. I love the honeymooners. That yeah. was a good series. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, aren't you kind? And I'm so appreciative of your heartwarming approval of me. In fact, the only discernible difference between you people and high grade pharmaceutical morphine is that morphine doesn't judge. <laughs> You were addicted to morphine for many years, were you not? <laughs> stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to go for it. But you speak of days gone by. <laughs> Anyways, Adrian, have we started talking about your most recent troubles, boy? Ah, uh, which troubles were those? Your recent separation from your child bride, Effie. Ah, uh, well, it's, actually, I hadn't planned on uh, making any public pronouncements. Oh, well, you've got to, boy. You've got to. It's all over the tabloids. All of her dropping you like a hot potato and doing the town with that wafer thin Lothario of Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the stories, but I don't give too much credence to the rumor mill. Oh, it's not a rumor, dear. Trust me. <laughs> trust me. I had Effie and Billy Bob over for dinner the other night. <laughs> <laughs> they were like a couple of like golden retrievers in the heat. <laughs> they get bottles of cold water and douse them at one point just to get them unstuck. Thank you for the update. Are you going to be okay, old chum? I'm scared. Well, actually, I, I was a bit disappointed that Effie Liu and myself didn't make it. Well, you know what they say about Adrian and his marriages. <laughs> He's made more trips to the altar. Hold the card a little higher, dear. Thank you. <laughs> He's made more trips to the altar than Harry Truman made whistle stops. <laughs> you see, back in the late 40s, President Harry Truman would give campaign speeches from the back of a train, and, and at that time, they called them whistle stops. So, I told you fellas in the writers' meeting I'd have to take that door to door. Chick, Betty, I'm doing all I can to combat ageism here in Hollywood. But you two have simply got to start updating your references. <laughs> anyway, that having been said, we've got a wonderful show for you tonight. Adrian. Do what you do, boy! Coming up, Jason Alexander, after this. <laughs> oh, I hurt my groin. <sighs> Larry David, in his first dramatic role. Are we going to play or talk about uh, no. sexual it? relations? Starring as Enron CEO, Kenneth Lay. Very good. It's your right. I can't do anything about it. I just saw you reach down and pick up a card and put it what? on. That's just funny that that, that was. So if, if I do that, suddenly I'm a thief because I dropped Sounds it. Sounds like no. She it. dropped the card. She's not a thief. I don't you know. said it. You I that man. Can you knowingly cheat it? Yes, of course I was cheating. But still, uh, they didn't know I was cheating. So for them to think I'm cheating is as bad as if I wasn't cheating. Do you want water? No, I've got something stuck for two seasons now. Dad, yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole to-do to phone them. Well, wait, you can't blame them then if they thought you were cheating. Undo it. Call them up. What? So, so, I'm supposed to phone everyone that I ever play cards and say, I'm not cheating, even though I'm not cheating? Hey, is this, this Donald Rumsfeld. Hey, Rummy, how are you? It's, it's Kenny, boy. So, you good? So can you believe that guy? He just brushed me off after all the money I raised for him. He, he wants to. Tell George W. that I have a great cure for hangover that I found. Hey, you in the big mouth. Barbara Bush, yeah, huh? You four-eyed freak of f***ing nature. You can't go around screaming about hangover cures. George W. hasn't had a drink for 15 years. No, no, I was, I was talking about your granddaughter. Cause well, that's none of your f***ing business. 
this is your idiot! Oh. Just leave oh. it alone, will you? Oh. Shut your oh. f***ing mouth! Oh. Oh. Larry David is Kenneth Lay in Curb Your Capitalism. It's not TV, it's primetime glick. Oh, oh my goodness, that was wonderful, Adrian. Where have I heard that, though? It was a number that was cut during the out-of-town tryout. Oh, I remember. Oh, I remember. After supper, Billy Bob Thornton and Effie were dirty dancing to it in the hot tub. <laughs> and the next morning, Jorge had to pump over a gallon of chlorine into that water just to regain clarity. <laughs> anyway, oh, there they are. You all know my next guest as the bald-headed neurotic from Seinfeld. He was also wonderful as the bald-headed spokesman for KFC commercials, and I believe he was the bald guy from Night Court. Let's find out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hairless wonder himself, Jason Alexander. <laughs> Let's see me. Let's go. See you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very, it's very exciting to have you here. Well, it's exciting to Jason be here, Jason Alexander. And 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 it's so funny because I got to be honest with you. Normally, bald-headed people scare me. <laughs> There's something depressing about a bald-headed person. And yet, you're because of the gifts you have and the thing that you give people, I feel good about it. Well, thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm on a sedative, but I'm not as... I'm only <laughs> a half a pill. It's not a full pill. And I think that's to be to you and your craft. Well, thank you. But you and, and that's a wonderful piece of yours, by the way, as well. <laughs> But this, this is what, this is called the Seinfeldian type edge that these people do. It's the, it's the, they, they, they dig you down deep and they knock you off your pedestal. <laughs> Didn't you used to do that? Yeah. Let's go back to your hair. You said, <laughs> it says here that you started losing your hair at the age of 16. 17. 17. That yeah. must have been tough. Yeah, it was a little rough. I had, I had just got, I had braces for nine years. And, and yet you uh, had chest hair at the age of four. The, I, yes. Exactly. It's the follicles that have just gone mad. Apparently there's too much testosterone. It leads to uh, excessive body hair, uh, over-enlarged genitals. And back hair, I suppose you have a tremendous amount of back hair. Uh, it's under control, but it's there, it, yeah. Do you think that waxing is an answer? Because I once asked George Clooney this, and he looked at me so strangely, and I realized I was talking to his aunt, Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> Although she freely, she freely talked about it. Well, you know, I know, I, I actually know some interesting things about you, as because you know, I, want, I like to prepare. But the thing that fascinated me the most, because we both have shared a weight issue in our life, I didn't know that you were a practicing nudist. Yes. Uh, I, well, no, don't oh, don't oh. And can I tell you something? Don't judge. <laughs> Would you like a hanger here? Well, borrow mine. Oh, thank you very much. No, quite a Oh, Kalu and milk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you. <laughs> I learned very, at a very early age. Oh, thank that you. At a very early age, to clean your face like a cat might look strange, but it's the only way to get all the crumbs off. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, why should we look at these animals? And I, for example, my dog cleans himself in a way that I had never tried until a couple of days ago. <laughs> What are we talking? Oh, well, you're a very nimble guy, so I can see. I really yeah. am. That's a you share a birthday with Mickey Rooney. I didn't know that. He did that wonderful movie, Bill. Oh, about the retarded. He <laughs> that you are a natural at this. <laughs> you should be doing some legitimate theater or film, I my friend. Boy, I love this boy. <laughs> you gotta wrap it up. You gotta wrap it up. He's not playing like I'd hope. You know, Leo DiCaprio played a retarded person in his first outing. Big career now. You should look for, uh, I think, basically retarded roles would be. Oh, well, isn't that 
kind of you. You did Cinderella I with did. Whitney Houston. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Was Bobby Brown there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bobby did come by. Was he high on something? <laughs> I'm sure he was, actually. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. This is, this is, this is, this is a fun interview. <laughs> I want to talk about Shallow Hal and whether you think that J-Lo and Ben are going to make it. Oh, I have never seen I don't seen have any more time. Oh, okay. Because well, I've got other people, right. and this was supposed to go much shorter. But I like you. It feels like it went shorter. <laughs> It feels like it went shorter. What does he mean? What's he talking about? <laughs> Off the wall. And it's Seinfeld all over again because they take the smallest thing like, ooh, a gumdrop, and then the guitar comes in. It was wonderful. And you, as bass. George Costanza. Yes. An Emmy Award winning... No, I didn't win. Nomination. Yes, nomination. Uh, Golden Globe. Yeah, I didn't win that either. Uh, 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 the, uh, the Tony Award for George... No, that was for, for, for theater. Well, no. let's say people had liked your work. Then I'd say, here's to you, Jason Alexander. <laughs>
You were a jazz drummer. Yes. I had once an infection in my outer colon, and my doctor gave me a few rim shots, and it absolutely helped me. <laughs> and I think, and I think that it can help you too because rim shots, it, rim shots, it, and your outer colon, outer colon. He and gave that, me a that, few that. rim shots, <laughs> and it helped. It was an infection. It was an infection. That's what it was. That's what it was. <sighs> now let's give me a minute, will you? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm fine now. You were a stand-up comedian. I was a stand-up comedian. Yes. As a cat skills. Yes. What's the cat skills? It's Catskills are a series of mountains and just outside of New York City. What would people do in the Catskills? Well, they would eat a lot of out of uh, sour cream, chopped vegetables, and sour cream. Uh, and usually, uh, they would they would die. They would just they would just go up to die. Then. No, they wouldn't die from it. Oh, I see. Because they would sing, dancing in the dark. That was their favorite song. And they would sing it in the wrong key. They would, they would start much too high. They'd be rocking on the porch, as Jews are, are wont to do. I know. I want to, that's my and next question. Dancing in the dark. You know that we're in trouble already. Till the two dance, we're waltzing in the dark. And it's soon and, and we can face the music together. And then they have a stroke. And, and they did be gone. Then there was a porch person, a Gentile, who would take them away. and Just take these dead Jews away. Take, yes, take these dead Jews away. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's well put. What scares Mel Brooks? Olive oil. <laughs> uh, there are many things that, you know, mm. uh, if I came upon them, would, would, fr would frighten would me. Michael Jackson, do you think he's cuckoo? Oh, no, no, I, he's, a, he's a wonderful, uh, beautiful uh, person. Oh, so you're in business with him? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand it. Of I understand no, how it Why make enemies? Who the hell knows? Right. He's liable to run a studio one day. <laughs> the producers. Yes. Why didn't people see it? <laughs> Everybody saw it. They did? Yeah. I heard it was a big fiasco. That's well, what a friend of mine who was doing my, powdering my hands said. Yeah. <laughs> You're no, saying it was a, a hit. It's a big show on Broadway. And it was shut out of the Tonys. It must have hurt. <laughs> Wasn't shut out. It won the most Tonys ever. It won 12 Tonys. But it was nominated for 14. That meant it lost two. No, no. <laughs> That's very good. Whatever you say, Mel. Whatever you say. And Michael Jackson's normal. I'm going to go along with you because you're my guest. <laughs> Has show business. <laughs> is it still not ready to accept someone who is Jewish? But... Only Jews are in show business. Really? I don't know of one Gentile that's ever succeeded in show business. What's your, what's, what's your big beef with the Nazis? What's my big beef? Yes, it seems like you're always what's knocking. What's my big beef with the Nazis? Everything you do, you're always knocking the Nazis. Oh, let's, it's, it's time for Mel Brooks to knock the Nazis, <laughs> it seems. Oh, I don't know. I think they're rude. I guess, I guess. <laughs> This has been absolutely so much fun. This is the craziest f***ing interview I've ever done in my life. That's why they call me multidimensional. Okay, let's... Wonderful... One other question. <laughs> Where did he go? Why is this man stormed up? Primetime Glick. We'll be back after this. <laughs> it's just bubbles make me laugh. It's a, it's a little bit warm in here. Oh, it is warm. I just assumed I was having a hot flash. I am having the worst menopause. You think we could turn it down? Uh, oh, that's a, a good idea. Oh, and look at that, what I've done now. Okay. <laughs> oh! oh! What? Look at that. What did you do? Broke. Oh, for God's sake, Wing the custodian was supposed to have tightened that each other. He's done just the opposite. Damn those communists. They get over here and they think they rule the world. Wait, the door won't open. Help! Help! Oh, this is great. This is just Help great. us! We're going to door! You know, this entire interview has been a disaster. And the worst part is, I knew it. Going in. Oh, and it's if you were to mercy booking. Well, thanks to you, we're going to end up poached like a couple of sockeye salmon.
I don't like sockeye salmon poached. There's something insipid about it. Oh, no, no, no. You have to season. Uh, a little lemon or a little butter. Some people love dill. I'm allergic myself. My problem is that Dixie, my wife, when she cooks, she's usually in a stupor. Hmm. Last time she made salmon, she left the car keys in there. I swallowed the beeper. Every time I tooted, the garage door would open. Yeah. Help! Help! She's gonna blow! <laughs> <laughs> Well, nice work, Glick. You think with all this shrinkage, there still wouldn't be a cellulite issue? Don't talk to me about shrinkage. It wasn't exactly long, dong, silver to begin with.